it never gets old. I could eat it every day of the week. It's easy to make and it's delicious. That's right, we're making a steak dinner on the Napoleon Phantom Grill. So we're gonna have steak, we're gonna have some grilled potatoes, I'm doing some cherry tomatoes, I'm doing a homemade spicy steak sauce, and some grilled green beans. Let's get right to it. What I have here is two ribeye steaks. These are about three quarters inch thick, and you'll notice they do not have the spinalis or tail piece on there. That is just because these were the end cuts, but they are still ribeyes. And what we're gonna do, I learned a really cool trick from J. Kenji Lopez Alt, and I'll leave a link in the description uh, to a couple of his videos that I'm gonna mention today. But the trick is, if you want a really nice crust on your steak, what you wanna do is dry brine it. And so what you're gonna see here, I am going to salt this with some kosher salt on both sides, and then I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator to dry out overnight. And what you'll see here, this is after four hours. The salt has dissolved, but you'll see there's plenty of moisture still on these steaks. And then if we fast forward to eight hours, you'll see that it's almost already completely dried out. And here's the steaks 24 hours later. All that juice is gone. It got pulled down into the center of the meat along with the salt. So it's gonna be seasoned all the way through. And now we're gonna get the most amazing crust. It's gonna be as if we did it on a black stone or a griddle, uh, that kind of a crust from the grill. And speaking of grill, let me show you what I got going on under the hood here. So this is my Phantom Series grill that Napoleon sent me. And that's a little grill basket for vegetables. So I'm gonna get that preheated. And today I'm turning on all four burners. I want this thing raging hot because we got a lot of stuff to cook in a short period of time. And the first thing we're gonna get started on is the potatoes. So I have here eight cups of water and about a tablespoon of salt. One of the best things you can do for potatoes is to use salted water. And don't put your potatoes in until the salt has dissolved. It's gonna make sure that all that seasoning gets down into the flesh of the potatoes. And then add a half a teaspoon of baking soda. So this is a J. Kenji Lopez Alt secret as well, and I'll leave a link to the description below. But there's gonna be a chemical reaction now with the potatoes where this water is going to start to break down the pectins of the potato. And in the end, once we go to grill these, it's going to create a much more crispy crust than if you had not done this. It's a really cool video and it's only a couple minutes long. I'll put the link below, check it out. Now let's get these potatoes cut up. So I'm just cooking for two people today. So I'm gonna use some gold potatoes. I'm gonna cut up four of these and I'm just cutting them into wedges. So cut each one in half and then cut each of those halves in half again. And then put them straight into your salted bacon soda e water and you want to cook them for approximately 10 minutes. You want to get them just before they're done. So they'll be fork tender but not all the way done. You don't want them to fall apart when you put them on the grill. So just keep an eye on them but roughly 10 minutes should be good. So that's one side. Another one of my favorite sides is green beans. And if you've never tried grilled green beans, they are delicious. They don't take long, but what I gotta do is get these trimmed up, so I'll show you that. After you've got your beans nice and rinsed off, I like to grab a handful at a time and then just cut off all the stems in one pass. This saves a lot of time. So I'm gonna get all of these chopped up Drizzle them with a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Season with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And then give them a quick toss and these will be ready for the grill in just a couple minutes. Let's go check on our potatoes. Over on the sizzle zone. So it's probably only been about three or four minutes, but let's check them anyways. Not quite ready, getting close though. So we got that just about ready. And let's just take a look here. We are up to uh, about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so while that's going, I'm going to get a sauce ready that we're gonna cook a little bit later. 
so it's gonna be about two tablespoons of butter. This is almost like a ranchero sauce, if you've ever had that, but this is very simple. It's gonna have some heat to it. So if you don't like spicy, you might not like this, but I will say these cherry tomatoes really mellow out the heat. And I'm gonna go a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Look at that, that's the end of the bottle. Get a garbage can here somewhere. And then I'm gonna go a half a bottle of this chili garlic hot sauce. I think you can find this at most grocery stores. Just use any of your favorite hot sauce you want. So this is uh, five ounces or 150 milliliters and I'm doing half a bottle. Again, this is for uh, two steaks. So let's get this in here and this way it'll be ready to go at the very end. We'll just have this sitting off to the side. And here's our potato wedges. I took them out and uh, drained them off over a paper towel, let them sit for about five minutes. And now I'm gonna hit them with some olive oil. Just as a point of reference, it's about 45 degrees Fahrenheit outside. That's why these are steaming so bad. So uh, a little bit of olive oil to coat them. And then a little bit more of the salt, pepper, garlic. Even though we salted the water, you still wanna salt the potatoes a little bit. And we'll just give them a mix so they're nice and coated. And then we're gonna put them right on the grill. So I'm gonna dump my beans in. And I just use one of these because the beans will fall right through if you don't. And I'll push these back to give us some room. And now I'm gonna get the potatoes. We just want some good grill marks at this point. They're almost completely cooked. And the whole thing you wanna do is uh, get grill marks and sear on all the sides. Just kind of keep these off to the side so we got room for our steaks. Up here, I'm gonna put my tomatoes. Again, I'm not really interested in a real heavy char on those. I'm just trying to heat them through and I keep them on the vine. I think it's a little better presentation. So uh, this grill has this really cool rack up here. These cherry tomatoes fit right in one of those holes. So now I know those aren't gonna go rolling around on me. Okay, now for the steaks. I don't need to add any salt. There's plenty of salt. I'm gonna hit them with a light coating of olive oil. In fact, that was probably a little too much on that one. So we'll share the wealth. Okay, just gonna oil both sides. Again, help it from uh, sticking. And then also, I'm gonna put some pepper on these and it's gonna help that pepper stick. All right, some fresh cracked pepper. both sides and then I'm gonna put them both down listen to that sizzle so I like a medium rare steak not so much rare I'll even eat a well done steak as long as it's not dried out I'm not a uh, medium rare snob just gonna give it a little push make sure we're making good contact with the grate check our beans oh yeah look at that so they are starting to brown up already it's perfect so those are probably Couple more minutes, those will be done. Start checking our potatoes. Look at that. 
Nice sear marks. No color, no flavor. And that's what we're doing here. I just love how fast this all comes together. Whether you're by yourself or someone helping you, it's no big deal to throw together an awesome meal like this. These tomatoes are starting to pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this lid down and then we'll come back and give these steaks a little quarter turn. And we're almost done. All right, got some flare ups. Let's see what's happening here. Nice. So just a little quarter turn. See how nice that's crisping up? It would look totally different if we uh, did not brine it. It's almost gonna have the texture as if you seared it off on a griddle or a pan. All right, let's flip them. Woo! That's what I call a crust. That looks phenomenal. Man, that's some good looking steaks. And so while everything's finishing up, here's my sauce that we made earlier. I did add about two small diced shallots that I forgot to put in earlier. And as far as the steaks go, guys, cook it to your desired uh, doneness. I'm going medium rare, which is for me, anywhere between 130 and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. What I'll do is take it off a couple degrees before that and let it rest. You'll get a little bit of a carryover temperature, but just cook it to your uh, desired doneness. Everything's starting to come together. As soon as this butter melts, I'm ready to plate everything up. Green beans. Oh yeah. go let's get some of these tomatoes grab a steak Couple of these potato wedges. Crunchy. Man, those are good. All right, get the heat turned off. Here we go. Get my sauce in one moment. Okay, here's that sauce. Woo! Vegetables over the potatoes. Man, not bad for a quick Sunday afternoon meal. after it. Boom. Look at that nice pink. Nice medium rare. The crust on this is just incredible. Just a simple technique like that. Dry brine it. Look at that. Potato. Get a bite. Mmm. Nice and crunchy on the outside. Very soft in the middle. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's good. Try a bean. Mmm. Fresh. It's amazing. One of these tomatoes.
Mm -mm -mm. And last, but certainly not least, piece of that steak. So good. And hey, if you like this video, definitely check out one of those two right there. And I'll see you over there.